What's up guys, Andrew here. Today I'll be reviewing the all new Lenovo La Z. This is the world's lightest 13.3 inch Ultrabook that also happens to feature the latest Broadwell U CPUs unlike the new MacBook which features a Core M CPU. There are two versions of the La Z to choose from. There's the HZ550 which is the one we have here and then there's the HZ750 which is a 2-in-1 convertible. There has been some confusion in regards to the 2-in-1 convertible. You can use it in tent and stand mode, however the screen will not rotate automatically and the keyboard will not deactivate, which is a real bummer. Lenovo had some misinformation when it first went on sale and therefore some users are confused on which model comes with what. So now Lenovo has updated their website to feature the 2-in-1 convertible as a laptop slash tablet computer, unlike the Yoga line of laptops which has 4 multiple modes. The model we're looking at today is the HZ550. It features a Core i7-5500U, 8GB of RAM, a 256GB SSD, and a Quad HD panel. The HZ550 will retail for $1499 US, and the 2-in-1 HZ750 will retail for $1699 US. Alright, let's get started with the design and build quality. The new LaVZ features a magnesium lithium alloy that still feels pretty durable in my opinion. Lenovo is claiming that the new material is 50% lighter, yet still just as strong. With this new material, Lenovo is able to get this Ultrabook down to an amazing 1.87 pounds. You heard that right, 1.87. If you thought the new MacBook was light, you gotta hold this one in person to believe how light this one is. Now the 2-in-1 convertible is just a tad heavier at 2.04 pounds, and that's because of the Quad HD touchscreen panel. The thickest point for both units is 0.70 inches. With an Ultrabook this thin and light, I was expecting a lot of keyboard flex, but I was proved wrong. The keyboard flex is actually pretty good on this Ultrabook. Don't get too excited now, because there is a lot of flex on the display. Does it feel like it's going to break? No, but it does concern me a bit. And our last flex test is the top side. Overall, Lenovo did a good job on the top section because it barely flexes. Let's take a look at the ports here on the left side of the laptop. Here goes your Kensington security lock slot, AC charging port, Caps Lock LED, Charging LED, Status LED, and your Power Button. On the right side of this Ultrabook, you got a headset microphone jack combo, an SD card reader, two USB 3s, and a full-size HDMI port. A nice bonus with this SD card reader is the SD card is flush mount with the Ultrabook, meaning you can just throw this in your bag and just forget about it. Lenovo chose to go with a 13.3 inch Quad HD Sharp Exo panel and it looks gorgeous. Text and images are crisp and clear thanks to the resolution of 2560 by 1440. Out of the box, the calibration was a bit off, but once I used my Spider 4 Pro colorimeter, the colors look much better. The sRGB coverage came in at 100%, and the Adobe RGB came in at 72%. These are some very good scores, especially for a Lenovo laptop. You rarely see a Lenovo laptop score this high on the color gamut. Viewing angles on the Sharp Exo panel has been pretty good. The standard Levi Z features a Quad HD matte screen that does a great job of reducing glare. The only downside to the base model Z is the lack of a touchscreen. The touchscreen is currently only available on the Levi Z360. But keep in mind, the Z360 is a glossy panel. This laptop is so thin and light that Lenovo cannot fit a traditional AccuType keyboard. Instead, they are using a keyboard that is engineered by NEC. Now I'm going to be quite honest here, I do not like this keyboard. The keys are small and they offer very little key travel. The right shift key and the backspace key are the size of the regular keys, which is weird, go figure. And to make matters worse, there is a forward space key right in front of the backspace key. And that makes it very hard to get used to. Hopefully Lenovo can find a way to integrate an AccuType keyboard or something better, because this keyboard is just plain awful. What's even more disappointing is the lack of a backlit keyboard. How can they call this a premium notebook that is missing a very important feature for most users? So let's talk about the trackpad. The Levi Z is rocking an Elon trackpad that has been very precise. The surface feels great, and the size is adequate. Two finger scrolling was smooth, but multi-touch gestures during web browsing was a bit choppy. However, the overall user experience on this trackpad has been great. The CPU in this notebook is a dual core Broadwell i7-5500U, unlike the weaker core M that is found in many small lightweight ultrabooks. The power and efficiency from this chip has been great. You can expect good performance from programming, web browsing, light photo and light video editing. Overall, the performance increase over the Core M is definitely noticeable. Here are a couple of benchmarks for the i7-5500U. The first one we have here is Geekbench 3. For the single core score, I got 3089. And for the multi-core performance, came in at 6375. Followed by Cinebench R15. For the CPU score, came in at 293. 
And our last benchmark here is PC Mark 8 Creative Accelerated, came in at 3,512. With a thin and light laptop running a Broadway U CPU, the temps should be pretty high, right? Nope, that's not the case at all. With casual use, the CPU averaged around 52 degrees Celsius, and with a high of around 63 degrees Celsius. Overall, these CPU temperatures are great. We will look at some temps after playing some games in just a bit. Integrated Graphics is powered by the Intel HD 5500. This GPU offers adequate performance for light duty games like Minecraft, League of Legends, and Counter Strike. Here's a quick demo of Counter Strike Global Offensive in action at 1366 by 768. As you can tell here, the game runs pretty smooth. I've been able to play some online matches without any issue. Here are some temperatures after playing Counter Strike Global Offensive. On the top section, I average around 35 to 40 degrees Celsius, and the middle section of the keyboard around 30 to 32 degrees Celsius. The bottom hovers around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius. The hottest section around the keyboard is around the O and P keys. Those are usually around 35 to 36 degrees Celsius. On the bottom side, towards the back, you'll average around 35 to 43 degrees Celsius. Towards the middle, around 35 to 38 degrees Celsius. And towards the bottom, around 28 degrees Celsius. The hottest section is around the CPU and the fan area. You're going to get around 39 to 44 degrees Celsius. After 45 minutes of Counter-Strike, the average CPU temps is now 68 degrees Celsius, with a high of up to 81 degrees Celsius. Even after some extended gameplay, this Broadwell CPU and this fan did a great job of handling heat. Battery life has been good. I've been getting nowhere near Lenovo's claim of 9 hours, but the Lavi Z features a 42 watt hour battery pack, unlike previous reports of a 29 watt hour battery pack. I've been able to get around 6 to 7 hours out of a full charge, with screen brightness set at around 50%. And this was with casual usage like web browsing, checking email, mixed video streaming with Netflix and YouTube. Here's a quick shot of the internal components of the new Levi Z. First up is your 256GB Samsung SSD. This drive has been fast, boot ups and system response was pretty good. However, I was disappointed that Lenovo did not choose to go with a PCIe SSD option. Next up is our wireless card. This one's rocking an Intel dual band wireless AC7265 with Bluetooth 4.0. This card has been one of my favorites. The performance and range is good, and I have yet to have an issue with the connection. Unlike the fanless Core M found on the Asus UX305 and the new MacBook, this Broadwell i7-5500U requires a fan. The fan noise levels were actually pretty quiet during light loads. Now if you're running a medium to heavy load on the CPU, then you'll start to hear the fan running. But rest assured, Lenovo's high-end laptops usually have very efficient fans that are not that loud. In fact, with a heavy load on a CPU, the fan will reach around 47 to 49 decibels. Next up, here's a test of the HD webcam in action. Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here, testing out the webcam on the new Levi Z. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. There are two bottom-facing speakers towards the front. The sound quality is about average, but my biggest complaint was the volume. On average, the maximum volume was only around 65 to 70 decibels. I wish Lenovo would finally give us a high quality set like the one found on the new MacBook. Now those are the cream of the crop right now in terms of speakers on Ultrabooks. And here's a quick sound test of these in action. Alright guys, let's get to the conclusion of the new Levi Z Ultrabook. The overall package sounds great. You get a dual core Broadwell i7, 8GB of RAM, 256GB SSD, a 13.3 inch Quad HD panel, and you get a decent amount of ports all in one slim and super lightweight profile. However, my biggest complaint was the keyboard. Even after days of using this Ultrabook, I just could not get used to it. It was very frustrating. The second con is not having a backlit keyboard. Those of you that do a lot of work during the night knows how important this feature is. The third con is the high price tag. Lenovo has a starting price of $14.99 for the Levi Z and $16.99 for the Levi Z360. I just think these prices are just too high for what you are getting. If they lowered the price down to around $1200 for the Levi Z, then that would make it a justifiable purchase. But as it stands right now with these high prices, I would pass and either wait for the second generation and see if they make some big improvements, or just get another Ultrabook for much cheaper. There are so many great options right now. Alright guys, this completes my full review on the all-new 2015 Lenovo Levi Z. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.